Good afternoon everybody, how you doing on this Sunday afternoon? I didn't get to do a video yesterday. Um, so I'm going to do a video today and it's on knife sharpening, but not, not an in-depth knife sharpening. It's just a quickie because this is what happens when I get a new knife. I recently got the new GEC number 39 uh, Colt Cutter with a spay blade, which is just so delicately beautiful. I love it totally smitten with it already but I haven't used it and here's why I haven't used it because as much as I love GEC sometimes they just don't come sharp and I want to show you what routine I use when I get a knife like that I'm going first of all I'm going to show you why it's a little bit of a problem so I'm starting up at the back here not great up at the back sort of about a quarter of an inch down it starts cutting and then And once you get up that last part where the belly is and it turns up, there's obviously a big burr or it just hasn't been sharpened because it is incredibly, it's just tearing. So what do you do when you get a knife like this? Here's what I do. So I'm going to bring you down now and let you see the, the, the tools that I've got out. Of the, This is a tools of the trade for anybody who, who wants to be a knife sharpener. And they're very simple, they're very basic and they're inexpensive compared to a lot of other uh, channels you might see here as sharpeners. I'm not that great, but I'm good enough to get a good edge on my I can get an edge uh, that cut hairs on my arm and that's good enough for me. Any sharper than that, it's a razor blade. I don't need it. So here's what I'm going to show you what I've got out. And this is what I get out when I get a knife like this. It's got a little bit of a problem. Not a problem. It just needs a bit of a tap up, right? So let's just show you what I do. So I'm going to turn you down. Now, uh, let's just get you down at the right level. Sorry, this is a bit shaky, but now let me just get this down a little bit more. There you go. I hope you can see that. Now, got a wee bit. There we go. So this is probably not going to be super... Fantastic. So here we are. This is what I get out when I have something like this and I want to give it a quick touch up before I use it. Now, the one thing that I am not, I'm so a stickler for is I don't want to remove any. This is a slim knife and I want to use it for years. So what I don't want to do is take any steel off that I don't have to. And that's the one thing if you're going to use knives, don't take any steel off you don't have to. So what I've got here, this is my favourite stone for, this is 1095, for the lesser, it's a, Shap, a Shapton Hano Kuramaki, or Kuramaki, yeah, something like that. It's a 1000. Um, you can get the Shapton on uh, Amazon. This is where I got this one. I think this is around £50, and I know it's not cheap, but this is a Shapton Pro, and it's just a splash and go. So I always have a little bit of water sitting in front of me. Sometimes you'll see it over in the corner. Um, and that's all you do is splash and go. You just put a bit of water on it and go. You don't have to wait. You don't have to let it soak in as such. You just put it on and start. That's why I like that. That's fantastic. Now, the reason I have picked this is all to do with this. The end of it seemed like it was a stubborn little burr or maybe just not sharpened properly. So I want to use this to bring that to an edge. If I didn't have that and it was just a bit gritty, I would use my little strops. And this is a three micron diamond, diamond spray on this one. And this one is a one micron diamond spray on this one. And I use them to start at the three, down to the one, and that will get me a nice screaming edge. Um, never mix them up. I keep them separate. They're bagged, both bagged separately so they don't get cross contamination because that's the last thing you want. Um, the next thing... I'm going to use them, but first of all, I want to get that tip so that it's cutting sharp before I go there. Because these are just the finishing off that will give me a nice edge. This is a thousand grit. It's sharpened glass type uh, finish on it. It's rock hard. So all I'm going to do is put a little bit of water up the center and just give it a little rub in with my hand, as you can see there. And then I'm going to get a nice little cloth to wipe my hands. And that's all I'm going to do is give this a little tickle, right? So again, this is not probably the best, but 
I start up here and I, I get it set so that it's sitting rocking nice. That's the angle I want it to be on. And I'll just come down. Now, you can see on the stone there, if I show you the stone, up at that top end, it's actually scratching. So that to me says there's a bit of a burr there. So this will not take long. Just keep your, your angle exactly the same and just keep doing it. Remember at that bottom bit, lift your wrist to get up that. And that's maybe what the sharpener hadn't done when he was doing it. Hadn't give that angle at the top a little bit of a tickle to get right up into the, 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 the belly. I'm not going to go too long. I'm going to go to the other side, find the angle there that's about the same. And people often ask you, what angle do you do it at? I have no idea. I've just been doing it like this for years. It's probably somewhere around the 20 mark. Maybe a little bit less. But, and you can see on that other side, again, you'll see, I'll show you that there. It is taking metal off. But that's what I don't want to do. But it's not taking a huge amount because it's only a thousand grit. So I'll give it a couple of tickles to see if it's just a burr. So now I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. And I think that will probably do. Uh, let's see. Let's see what that has done to it. Because I'm hoping it was just a bit of a burr there. And let's just see what it's like. And I'm a great one for feel. I like to feel what it's like going through paper. And then I know if it's sharp or not. So let's just see. The top bit. Now that got much further down than it did the last time. But it's still there. So I'm going to give it some more. So obviously all the way down. So I'm going to put my thumb up here. This is what I do. I lay where I want the pressure to be. I don't want to put pressure on it. But if I lay my thumb, that is enough pressure to get me up and down. That back bit that wasn't cutting properly. So. Half a dozen times on that side. Right, there we go. And then I'm going to go back and do this bit. This. And again, I really don't want to go any longer than I have to. And I mean, everybody has their own ways. This is just mine with a new knife. But there must have been a good size burr on there because it's taken off steel. I can see where the steel's coming off. And let's try it again. Let's just see where it is. How it's looking. So I'm up at the back portion portion of it now. That's much better. Much better. That's right down to the tip. So that to me just lets me see that I've got right down to the tip with removing a little bit of steel. So I, that's enough. I don't need to, that's enough steel for that stone. And it's as quick as that. It's, it really is. And this is not complicated. This is not something. A little bit of practice. And this takes you a couple of seconds. And you're not removing a stack of steel. So there we go. It's just a thousand grit stone. I use that for all my... Um, I'm going to say lesser for want of a better word. My lesser blade steels that are not super steels. <coughs> this will do. This will actually do for S30 and S30. But I'm not going to confuse it. I use it for the lesser ones. Let's put that out of the way. And then I go straight to my diamond emulsion stones. And I use, just so I can let you see what I use. Um, this is what I use. Um, this is Gunny Juice. And you can get this in the UK. I'll leave the description of where you can get it from in the UK. You can get it in America. I'm not sure the, what suppliers, but I'm sure you can get direct from Scott Gunn. That's who, that's who owns the company. Super stuff, the best I've ever tried. But you know, I haven't tried a huge amount, so I'm being honest there. But I think it's fantastic, and I've been using it now for probably six months. Really, really enjoy using it on any steel. 
So we'll put our water top on. We're finished with that and put that out of the way. And so I'm going to start off with the three. And I mark this on the paper bag. I mark it all round so that I don't mix these up. So I'm starting with three micron. And it's just like any stropping, exactly the same as I do all my stropping. Light touch and then just... Just a light touch. I hope you can see that all right. And the reason I start up at the corners, you, I, I start up in the corner, is because I can get the very tip of the blade there, so I know that I'm getting that top portion. A lot of people leave that top portion and don't cut it, or don't uh, strop it. And then you bring it up early, and then you got that last wee bit to get right up to the end. Because again, that was another part, the tips in the the back end and eyes is usually where it gets forgetting to be uh, sharp. My English is terrible. I'm using words that I've just not been taught. <laughs> but this is it. This is the least amount of metal that I can get to give me an edge that is going to do me for my, my day. I mean, it doesn't need to be a, a, a high polish finish. Um, 1095 is a tough wee steel. Do you know what I mean? Don't. Don't knock 1095. It is a real great little working steel, especially on a little pen knife like this. That's not going to do anything great as far as toughness goes. It'll just be for slicing things, and that's it. So, I mean, usually about 10 each side I do, just to keep it there. And then the last couple I'm going to get down and do that end bit, because that's where it wasn't as sharp. I just do that couple of times and then go back to my sharpening and you can do it just straight from the bottom across I don't have any preference it's just that's the one I usually do where I go up in the corner but it doesn't matter where you do it but just make sure it's light you don't want to take that edge off at all and you can take an edge off when you're stropping I mean you know that if you're a, a sharpener sometimes you can get a knife lovely and sharp off the stones stick it on your strop and you can blunt it by just going too hard, pressing too hard, and if you press into the leather, it'll turn up and then blunt that edge. It's you know, Sharpening has lots of different ways to annoy you, but once you get used to it, and once you get used to what to do if it happens, because all you do if it happens is just drop your edge down and go lighter, and it will sort itself out. It's not complicated. So I'll let you see what that's like after a couple of stops, and we'll start to see what this little knife is like. Oh. It's definitely sharper than it was. But not sharp enough yet. So I'm going to keep going. Give it a little another 10 each side. And again, this will take metal off your knife. But it's not going to take as much as a stone will do. And all I want is a little knife that's going to give me a nice crisp edge. Actually, need to put a bit more paste than this too, I think. Because with this uh, diamond mulch, you can see little flecks of the diamond on there, but I'm not seeing too many at the minute, because that's what's obviously given the, the edge. But no excuses, just keep going. Right, again, give it a wee clear off. And let's see what that's like. There, yeah, that's coming now. That's because it's a spay at the edge. That's nothing to do with the sharpness because the sharpness is right down to the end. So, super. Now I'll take this to the one micron. And again, exactly the same thing. I shall just start at the top corner because that's the way I prefer to do it. And this one has plenty of diamond on it. I can feel the difference. So this should really give this edge a nice crisp finish to it that's going to give this blade a super working edge with removing the least amount of blade because it's a wee thin blade it's a pocket knife and like I don't know you remember the old when you've seen the old knives they used to have a big curve in them 
where they'd put them on belt sharpeners and give them, take all the blade away, and it just, your knife goes away. You wouldn't get six months or a year out of a knife if you're going to use a belt sharpener, or if you're going to use, like, to start off on a, you know, a, a 200 or 300 grit stone to start with. There's no need for that. A thousand grit will bring most simple steels back to an edge. Uh, I can feel it now. And not only feel it, I can see the edge actually becoming, oh, I can feel the edge becoming smoother. I can see it becoming, starting to sparkle. That is a beautiful edge. And I hope you can see that. Can you see that edge? I mean, that's just, you know, what have I spent five minutes? Most of that's been talking. But I have a lovely, glorious, shiny edge on it. And now after the one micron, what's that like? Absolutely fine. Again, that's just where this comes around here. It gets to the, the tip, if you can see, with the spy blade. But when I do it nice and slowly, it's actually going right up to the tip. So that's all it is. You know, there's no one, it's just a super working edge on a knife that looks nicely polished. And I've, I've put no work into it. No work. And that blade is, honestly, it's just beautifully polished. It's all I'll ever need in a blade. So I'm happy now that I can put this in my pocket because at the moment I'm carrying this for 10 days, which is my new uh, Chris Reeves. And how long have I had this now? Uh, this has been eight days in my pocket, two more days. And then this puppy is going in my pocket for 10 days because I just love it and I want to use it. I don't want to just put it in my case as a GEC. Now, I'm not going to use, I'm not going to try to get patina on this. Now, it will come naturally, but I'm not going to be using this for cutting steaks or any hot food. No need to. I've got plenty of other knives that can use that. This is just going to be a pocket knife that I want to keep in that sort of nice fashion. I'll put a bit of oil on it and keep this one. I don't do it with a lot of them. I just use them. But this one is a really nice knife and I want it to be a nice pocket knife that I can use. So there you go. Very quick, very simple. Don't take any more metal off your blade at all. It really will not benefit you. And I'll just lift this up again. Sorry, that's been terrible photography. So, you know, do not take the metal off, especially on a small slim blade like this. And I hope you can see, this is probably not the best, but that is a beautiful edge all the way down, nice and even all the way to the bottom. Let me just get it. There we go. You can see that lovely edge right to the top. Very happy. I adore this knife on it and I haven't used it. I just love the feel of it. The handle's slightly different and curved in the way and a little bit fatter and only just millimeters difference. But the 15 is my favorite knife for just a pen knife. This is definitely equal to it, if not more. I feel more comfortable in my hand. Um, I just adore it. Now it doesn't stick out the top, but it's four fingers. Absolutely secure in my hand. Love this bay blade. You knew I would love this bay blade. But so there we go. My number 39 now ready for use. And I haven't had to take too much metal off it. My lesson for today. Bye bye. Take care. Have a great weekend or the rest of your weekend. Bye bye now.